How's everyone doing today? I have a humongous stack of horror Blu-rays and DVDs right here. Uh, yeah, that is massive. Uh, these are ones I've picked up in the past uh, few weeks. I figured I'd do like a combination update right here and just kind of go through them. And if you've seen any of them, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know what your favorite from this lot is as well. First up, I've got two copies of Carl Girl of Cthulhu, which is a really entertaining, uh, low-budget horror movie. It's got some comedic elements to it as well. Um, it's Lovecraftian, obviously. It's basically about this uh, guy who is a struggling artist who is a uh, virgin. He's been saving himself for somebody special, and he uh, sees this call girl uh, who has the mark. Uh, it's like his birthmark. I think it's like on her lower back slash butt. And uh, basically, there's this crazy cult who uh, wants to have her have Cthulhu's babies and essentially bring the end of the world. Uh, it's absolutely entertaining. A really good low-budget horror, horror comedy uh, that I would definitely recommend checking out if you're into low-budget horror like that. And uh, this one is kind of like a throwback look to old school posters and uh like the 70s and 80s and kind of uh horror novels as well and i'm a big fan of this one so i had to pick up both i like uh, both artwork choices right there the back is essentially the same the movie's the same and everything it's just the new cover art but uh these are from uh, camp motion pictures uh again this is one i would definitely recommend for uh, low budget horror fans call girl of cthulhu uh next up is blood diner one of my all-time favorite movies and Easily one of my favorite uh, horror comedies. Uh, there you go. It's basically these uh, two uh, Campbell brothers right there. They're trying to... Uh, uh, it's, the, it's kind of basically a parody of um, Blood Feast. I think initially it was started to be a sequel. And it's kind of parodying, uh, you know, Ishtar, Shitar. They're trying to bring uh, this goddess back and using different body parts to do so. And Uncle Anwar is amazing. The climax is amazing. So many hilarious scenes. The scene where he drives over back and forth, the wrestlings. There's just so many amazing moments and scenes in here. This is one of the horror movies I've uh, watched the most in my lifetime. I remember watching this as a kid and just thinking it was absolutely entertaining, bonkers, hilarious. Uh, one of the best horror comedies out there. If you like cheesy 80s horror comedy movies, I would highly recommend Blood Diner. And a really nice release from uh, Lionsgate with the Vestron Video Collector Series Edition right there, slip cover. But, uh, absolutely amazing i love the heck out of this so happy to have it in my collection i held off on a while uh, for a while because i wanted it to go down in price and then uh, the slip covers are kind of limited uh so it took me a while to pick it up with the slip cover but so happy to have it in the collection now next up is another one of my all-time favorite movies and my favorite evil evil killer kid movie and that's who can kill a child aka island of the damned uh, i prefer island of the damned as the title but this is definitely more polarizing and uh, eye-catching and you know just kind of a shock value essentially which is why I think they went for that name um, but it's about this couple who go to this island and uh, she's pregnant and they don't see any adults there at first and they see uh, some of the kids killing the adults and they have a standoff with the kids and they have to fight to survive and they have to uh, you know make the decision can they kill a child to save their own lives from a 1976 Spanish film. Uh, this one has a new 4K transfer. Uh, this is the limited edition one, limited out of a thousand, uh, with unique artwork, uh, red case, and I think it has a few other things that are limited to this release, but it is a region-free release from Mondra Macabre. Uh, this still goes for like 60 to, seven, uh, 60 to 70 bucks for this release right here. And you know, you got the booklet and you got some art cards and stuff in here too. Um, I'm not going to take them all out right now, but uh, I might do an unboxing for this one. That's the artwork that I love right there. And I was going to actually keep it as this and put it on my shelf as this, you know, because the Island of the Dam, the spine right there. But it doesn't have on, uh, like this one right here, it has the limited to a thousand. Uh, I feel like it should have had it on this side too, the reversible artwork. Uh, to not have that on that side, I feel like it's kind of a, kind of a missed opportunity right there. Because I would have definitely put it on my shelf as Island of the Dam because I highly prefer... Uh, that title and um, I like that poster artwork as well uh, so for now I'll keep it as who can kill a child just because it has the the limited uh, edition part right there for the the UPC and then the other one does not um, but yeah an amazing movie if you like evil killer kid movies to me this is the best love it 
Next up is Zombievers, which this was a Best Buy exclusive Blu-ray, and this one's actually pretty hard to find. You see some ones on eBay, but they're usually like other region ones, or even bootlegs I've seen on there before. Uh, but this is actually a really entertaining uh, horror comedy, very low budget, uh, about zombie beavers. There's like um, uh, like waste that is dumped. And I try to remember, it's uh, uh, what's that, that one singer guy, uh, John Mayer, and then a uh, comedian, I can't remember his name right now, uh, Bill Burr, and they're the ones driving, they're, they have an intro scene and an outro scene, which I think is hilarious, and it's basically a group of friends are at this secluded uh, cabin in the woods, and uh, one of them gets bit and infected, and uh, I like the, the mutations as well, and uh, all the zombies were start attacking at the fight to survive. It's hilarious, entertaining, it's low budget, it's cheesy, but I enjoy the heck out of it. Next up is Wormwood. Uh, Road of the Dead from Scream Factory. The next few are a couple of uh, Scream Factory releases. This is an Australian film. Again, low budget, but uh, really well done. Kind of like a zombie outbreak, and they have to fight to survive. Very simplistic. There is a twist, though, with the one sister character, which I liked. Um, and, yeah, they're trying to... Uh, he's trying to find his sister because his family is essentially killed, and um, he's just trying to team up with her and find her. And he meets some other people along the way, and they're just trying to get through these hordes of zombies, and there's, like, these... Uh, um, government scientists performing tests too uh, but I definitely enjoyed this one and I would like to see a sequel for this one too I definitely like Australian horror movies uh, especially when they have like the scenes of the outback and stuff like that this one doesn't really have that too much uh, but it just makes me think of the, any of the Australian ones like that uh, next up is Autopsy of Jane Doe I absolutely love this one another one of my favorite modern horror movies uh, Neil Hirsch is in here too and Brian Cox they're a father-son like mortician and they get this body and they're uh, trying to figure out um, like what happened and it was uh, I guess she was brutally murdered and then uh, they think that maybe she's not dead and all these weird creepy things start happening in the funeral home and uh, like the where they're at and uh, some really I remember there's like an elevator scene there's definitely some really good atmosphere here and I love uh, the ending to it. it's a really unique take and uh, definitely one I would recommend for sure and I like uh, the actors in here too um, you'll hear uh, Into the Wild is what I always think of with him. And uh, Devil's Candy is another one of my favorite modern uh, horror movies. Great heavy metal horror movie. Um, and this one to me was totally creepy. Um, it's basically, I love the acting here too. Ethan Embry was awesome. And then uh, Pruitt Taylor Vince, who is uh, the killer guy in here. He was amazing. He plays such an intense performance. He's great in everything that he does. Uh, but I remember him in Identity too. He had a small role in there, but uh, I really enjoyed it. But basically, it's uh, Ethan Embry's the father, and uh, they're moving to this house, and uh, Pruitt T uh, Taylor Vince used to live in the house, and he has this dark past, and there's murders at the house, and it just erupts. And I love the paintings in here, too, from Ethan Embry, which becomes super dark. Uh, just an amazing film. One of my favorite modern horror movies of the past few years. I uh, love the heck out of it. Next up is The Fun House, which is another Scream Factory release. I really want to get the slipcover for this one. I always enjoy this one. I always felt it was a bit underrated, but I feel like it's getting more exposure now, and rightfully so. Uh, I love the, the main creature in here, too. It's basically these uh, group of friends go to this Fun House carnival, and they see something they're not supposed to see. They see, like, a murder, and they have this, there's this one deformed, um, I guess, freak there, and... They're trying to uh, find the kids and kill the kids and the fight for survival, and it's just awesome and creepy, and I love the heck out of it, and uh, a great release from them as well. And uh, this is one is from uh, Toby Hooper, one of my favorites from Toby Hooper as well. Uh, so great to see it get the special treatment right here. And next up is Saturn 3. Uh, Farrah Fawcett was stunning in here. Harvey Keitel, for some reason, they dubbed his voice. I don't know if he, there's, I think the director had some kind of issue with him because the guy that dubbed his voice sounds so much like him. I was like, what was the point? And Kirk Douglas. Kirk Douglas and Farrah Fawcett are at this like uh, space station on Saturn's third moon. They've been living together for a long time. And then Harvey Keitel comes there with this massive robot. I don't like the heads of the robot. That's the one thing that bothered me, but uh, basically disrupts their lives. And there's a lot of uh, clash between uh, Harvey Keitel and Kirk Douglas. And then the uh, robot right there kind of goes crazy and starts killing people and it's a fight for survival. Uh, I thought this was a really good um, sci-fi horror movie. Next up is Hell Knight, another great release from Scream Factory. And I remember loving this as a kid. I even have the VHS tape for it, which I'm, I'm going to keep because for the memories of that one. Uh, but this is uh, the collector's edition with uh, Linda Blair in here. And I remember they were um, kind of a uh, like sorority sisters going 
Um, yeah, it's uh, right into Alpha Sigma Rio fraternity. Four pledges must spend the night. I thought it was a sorority, but maybe it's sorority and fraternity members are involved. They have to spend this night in this uh, supposedly is like haunted house where these murders happen, and um, they, you know, there's like this urban legend of what happened, and then they find out that there's somebody still there, and it's again another fight for survival. Uh, and I loved uh, the killer in here there too. And uh, Linda Blair was awesome in this one too. One of her uh, best performances outside of uh, The Exorcist. And there we go. Go ahead and show you. It does have the reversible artwork right there. I actually really enjoy uh, the newly commissioned artwork on this one. Sometimes I prefer the old school one, uh, but this one I definitely like. So I'm gonna keep this in here like that. But uh, another one that I can't wait to revisit, it's been a while, but I always remember loving this one and feeling like this one was underrated too. And next up is Mimic, which is one that I thought was really creepy and atmospheric. I love the whole like legend here. This is kind of a Korean ghost story about this tiger that can mimic the voices of people in the woods and kind of lures them in. Uh, it's basically about this family who comes across this little girl and the little girl seems a bit off and she's kind of like mimicking voices and says she has the same name as their daughter uh, and there's this cave and there's more to the cave more to the legend uh it's definitely creepy and atmospheric i felt like it was a bit of a missed opportunity at the ending the ending could have been better but still one that i would recommend checking out it's a really good uh korean um kind of ghost story next up is the editor which was hilarious kind of like a uh, parodying uh giallos and oh this was so much fun pure entertainment just so cheesy ridiculous over the top amazingness i love this so much uh this is from i uh, was the astron six i think it was uh, i think that's who it was that whole group of people it's kind of like that throwback 70s feel to um kind of a erotic slasher-esque giallo-esque stuff but i think it's astron six video was the the group of people that did this um, but yeah, this was so entertaining. I loved it and I would definitely recommend the editor. And there's a few different uh, editions and releases of this one, but there you go. And next up is Devil, which was uh, from the story of M. Night Shyamalan, which I thought M. Night Shyamalan, he gets a lot of crap, but I think he's a great storyteller. And this one is a very simplistic story. It's people uh, trapped in an elevator and they're trying to find out which person is the devil essentially and uh, there's a backstory there and kind of intertwines and a uh, really good atmosphere here too and great actor performances across the board and the storytelling was awesome i love with the twist there um absolutely thrilling and again i'm looking forward to seeing what he does next i'm looking forward to the next you know split uh sequel coming off there too i liked unbreakable a lot so it's kind of a combination of split and unbreakable uh, next up is Prince of Darkness. I think it's called Glass. There you go. Prince of Darkness, another uh, Scream Factory release, which is a really great John Carpenter uh, film. And uh, I like the performance in here. Um, Alice Cooper has a small role in here, Donald Pleasance, too. Uh, I remember there's like a group of students, and they have this canister that opens up, and, and there's an abandoned church, and there's like, a, like an evil force starting to kill people. And uh, yeah, this one was another one that had the slipcover. I really wanted to get the slipcover for this one because I love the artwork choice for it. So uh, definitely looking forward to revisiting this one. It's been a while. Another Scream Factor release is Animal. I think this was a really good one, but could have been better. I didn't really, the ending was another one that I wanted more from too. Uh, basically, there's a group of friends that go into the woods. That's uh, where uh, some of them used to go as kids. And um, basically there's this creature there killing people and they have to hide into this like um, a cabin in the woods and there's another group of survivors there and they all have to kind of fight to survive. And one of the things about all these kinds of movies when there's any kind of incident issue, um, it's basically humanity is also a big threat, not just the outside uh, whatever it could be, creature, slasher, post-apocalyptic, anything like that. Um, humanity is often uh, the, the worst enemy. So this was a good thrill ride. I like the effects, the looks of the creature. Uh, I thought that was awesome, but I wanted a little bit more from it. Next up, another really good release from uh, Vestron Video Collector's uh, Edition right here from Lionsgate is the Warlock Collection. This is a three-film set. I remember loving uh, the first two uh, when I was a kid. Those are the ones I remember watching. I don't think I ever saw the third one, actually, but Warlock Armageddon. I actually think I, speaking of which I do, I still have this. Uh, I've had it here for a while. And the button um, for Warlock Armageddon I had since I was a kid. Uh, whenever this came out but uh yeah when i was a little kid i got this button 
uh, with, for the movie when it came out. So that's pretty awesome. I just got like a few other buttons over here. Some uh, Roger Rabbit one, Roller Coaster Rabbit. A few other like a Rocketeer and some other different ones over there. Um, <laughs> I just had them sitting on my desk right here. I've had them sitting there for a long time. But um, definitely looking forward to revisiting these. I love the heck out of this one. Uh, Julian Sands was awesome in here. Um, and I just remember, it's just basically he was like a warlock and he's sent to modern times. And there was like a, uh, somebody hunting him. Uh, he's thrown um, into the future hundreds of years, 300 years actually. And in the second one, uh, Julian Sands is back and uh, he's trying to free his father um, from the fiery chains that imprison him. And then uh, the third one, I don't think actually has, uh, actually Lawrence from Hellraiser is in here, but I don't think um, Julian Sands is in the third one. But uh, really good, the first two are the ones that I remember the most. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out, digitally restored. Next up is Poughkeepsie Tapes. For me, one of the movies that creep me out the most. I'm so happy to see this get a Blu-ray release finally. Although uh, it does have like a slightly different editing from the old bootleg that I have as far as uh, the positioning of certain clips. But uh, the end scene is one that always haunts me. Like it, I still think of every now and then. Uh, totally it stays with you long after viewing. There's another couple scenes in the movie too that are just really creepy. It's about a serial killer. And I used to live right by Poughkeepsie, New York. So that's something that always stuck with me. And they find all these uh, videotapes, these creepy videotapes from a serial killer. So a lot of it is like that POV aspect, uh, but totally creepy. I love the whole storyline of what happens there too. Uh, next up, another, uh, this is from, again, another Scream Factory doing great releases. Uh, they do a lot of re-releases and stuff, but they also put ones out that don't have or didn't have previous releases like this one, which I'm so happy about. And I'm looking forward to the Critters box set coming out. Uh, so keep doing that. Keep putting out more movies that don't have little releases. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Next up is Teen Wolf 2, the collector's edition. Uh, Got this one when, when it was on sale and happy with this one. This was, you know, a cheesy one. I think it gets a little bit of uh, unfair hate. A lot of people just crap all over it. But I thought it was, you know, cheesy uh, entertainment. It's not really a horror movie, but it's, you know, a werewolf. I decided to throw it in here. And it's Scream Factory, a kind of a horror cult subdivision of Sh uh, Shout Factory. And I like the newly commissioned art with Jason Bateman in here, who uh, becomes uh, the, I think he's like the cousin of um, the, from the original uh, Teen Wolf movie. And he has the same kind of uh, stuff going on where he can turn into a werewolf and he's boxing and the whole kind of same premise here, essentially, but uh, cheesier, but uh, still entertaining right there. Early uh, Jason, is this Jason Bateman's might be his first starring role? I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but yeah, this was uh, again, I, I dig it. Next up is uh, Galaxy of Horrors. I got this in the, the horror pack. And I don't know if this was a I don't know if this is a horror pack. I guess it's not a horror pack exclusive because it would say on the side there, but uh this is basically a horror anthology with a bunch of different shorts right here. They all have to do with uh, in being in space. And I thought most of them weren't that good, but there were a couple uh, great ones, especially one amazing standout one, which um, I can't remember the name of it right now. I think it's something like No One in Space, No One Can Hear You Die or something to that effect. That one was amazing, and I hope one day that gets adapted to a feature-length film because I absolutely loved it. Um, there's a, I'd say like, two other ones that are really great and then there's a couple good ones and then a bunch of kind of crappy ones uh, but overall really uh worth picking up essentially for those three top ones and especially that the one main one i think it's called again uh in space no one can hear you die but i love the heck out of that one and i would love to see it get adapted to a feature length film next up are the three dvds i got this one for dirt cheap uh british horror movie very suspenseful um basically these friends are invited to a birthday party of somebody that they uh bullied uh, so they're all like um, high school students going. I think they actually just went to college. Uh, so it, was, it happened during like a, like a big party. And uh, basically they're invited and then they find out the brother's there and he's going to enact some vengeance right there. And uh, there's a storyline that comes out that I feel like was kind of unnecessary. And uh, But I, don't, I have mixed feelings. I like that they took some risks and it was kind of crazy. Um, but I, I definitely like the one, uh, the one chick right there. She was awesome being kind of like the crazy girl in there. But... Uh, uh, definitely some good suspense. A couple parts that were, you know, they could have done a little bit better with it. But overall, I thought it was decent and worth uh, checking out for uh, the price point, too, because I got it for dirt cheap. Next up is the Phantasm 5 movie DVD collection. I wanted to pick up the Blu-ray box set, but it went out of print pretty quickly. And I just don't want to spend that kind of money for it. It goes for, you know, over 100 bucks, and that's just, I'm not going to pay that for it. 
Uh, so these are, you know, this one's a remaster too. I haven't seen Ravager yet, but I'm still looking forward to checking that one out. But I always thought this was kind of an underrated franchise. Uh, I think it's an excellent franchise. And actually, I have the, the poster down there signed up by a lot of people, uh, including um, Angus Scrim before he passed away. So fantastic, which I'm going to revisit all of these and check out Ravager. It's stuck in here for right now. It's really tight in here. But uh, the slip cover, though, I do like that slip cover. I would have liked the box set, so hopefully one day I can pick that box set up if I can find it at a good price, the Blu-ray set. And then next up, or maybe they can get a re-release for it. Same thing with Fire the 13th. I don't want to pay the ridiculous prices for that Blu-ray Collection 10. Somebody needs to re-release that. Um, but next up, Massacre in Dinosaur Valley, another good cannibal movie. Um, again, it's kind of typical of these uh, 70s and 80s cannibal movies. This is from um, 85, and they're going to this area where it's uh, called Dinosaur Valley, or Valley of the Dinosaur. And uh, they basically go against these uh, these cannibals and then these uh, essentially slave traders. Uh, so it's you know pretty uh, stereotypical, a lot of the typical cannibal tropes, uh, but I thought it was uh, a really good one. One of the better ones out there. I've seen a lot of ones that were just kind of uh, write off terrible ones, but this is a decent one worth checking out. So there you go. Those were the, the massive pickup haul right there of uh, Hard blues. I've shown most of these already, but I figured I'd do like a combination um, video for them all update. And again, if you've seen any of these ones, definitely let me know what you think of them and let me know which one was your favorite from this haul right here. <laughs> Thumbnail face. But uh, thank you again for all the support on here. I really do appreciate it. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care.